Hey everybody, welcome back to the Dungeon Dive. Daniel here. All right, today we are going to explore Bright Helm, the realm of Popper's Ladder and the Moon Tower's expansion. Now, this is not going to be a learn how to play video. This is just kind of a casual little let's play where we're going to take a few turns and kind of just see what we can see in this wonderful and delightful little fantasy land. So for my game, I am playing the popper I have chosen is Darius Burr. He is a fisherman from Greyhaven, and Greyhaven is this city here. So that would be my starting region. I was able to purchase one piece of starting gear at the beginning of the game. And I chose to purchase this fighting tee. And that says, when your popper fights, discard this to draw two outcome cards. Their strength is the total of both cards. So combat in this game is very simple. You have a number of outcome cards that are one through six. And when you fight, you draw the top one and you add that to your strength. And you're trying to uh, beat, meet or beat the strength of, a, of an enemy or a hazard. For my bird, I have chosen the, pinge, the, the pigeon. And the pigeon starts the game untrained, but at any time I can pay four gems to train my pigeon, in which case I could flip the card over and then I would gain the bonus of the um, pigeon's trained ability. So that is something to keep in mind. I also was able to pick up three recipes. So you start the game with three recipes in learning. And one of the goals of the game, well, the main goal of the game is to uh, acquire three of the five different virtues. And uh, those uh, virtues range from you can trade in trophies of hazards you've defeated. If you defeat a um, elemental if you learn a number of recipes or solve a number of quests. So those are uh, some examples of some of the virtues. But for these, I need to acquire two of the three different recipes. And those are color coded with the regions across the land. So I have to find a feather in, the be in, the, in a beach region, a coastal region. Or maybe I have to find an enchanted log in a forest region. Or perhaps a dragon heart in one of the mines. And as soon as I collect two of these resources, I can flip the card over and then that becomes a, an additional power that my uh, popper can use. Um, to, in order to complete the recipe book, to earn that virtue, you have to learn five different recipes. Now I also, in this game, in the expansion, I start off with a talent. So talents are new bonus, are new abilities that your uh, popper can learn. And uh, at the beginning of the game, you draw two and you get to keep one. So let's see here. I'll draw those two there. All right. So let's take a look at one of our talents. So we can be a beggar. Uh, when your pauper moves into a city region, roll the lucky charm. And if you roll um, happy or very happy, you collect two gems. So I can beg in cities for money. Or I could be a cook. Um, instead of exploring, your popper can collect any one ingredient in the region they occupy. Place it on this card if there isn't one already. When your popper moves into a city region, they can discard this ingredient and collect three gems. Um, I think I'm going to become a beggar. My fisherman is going to become a beggar. So I'm going to take that as one of my talents and add it to my hero area, my popper area. Now my popper also has a uh, an innate ability, an item, and that is the fish hook. When your popper moves into a beach region, and that's any of these uh, yellow regions, uh, place one gem from the bank on this card. When your popper moves into a city region, put these gems in your purse. Okay, so I can go fishing, and the gems kind of represent fish, and then I can sell them to the city to a fishmonger when I move back into the city. And we also have all of our other cards here. So we have our other quests, we have our equipment, our rare equipment, our other birds, our um, apothecary, which is where all of our um, ingredients or all of our recipes are ready to be learned. We have our forest 
deck, beach deck, mine, mountains, and swamps. And so those are going to be the cards that we're going to be drawing from when we explore the different regions. Then I'm also playing the solo mode here. So I'm playing on easy. So my popper and my bird each have five health. I lose the game if either of them ever go down to zero health. And I'm starting on 15 time. And I also lose the game if I ever go down to zero time. It is possible to earn more time by doing these certain things. Defeating a hazard, learning a recipe, completing a quest, or a learner virtue will give you more time. You can also spend time to discard different hazards and things that are on the board. So if you want to get rid of things, you can spend time just to discard those. There are a few different rules about fighting moon towers because they're a little bit more powerful so your bird can help you. And you can also hide from a hazard. And if you do that, you roll this die and then you roll the lucky charm and then you follow the rules there. And when you're in a city, you can pay a gem to heal your character or your bird. All right, so the first thing we're going to do is it's our first uh, round here. So we're going to lower the time track by one. And I am starting here in Grey Haven, setting out. This is uh, the, the, a new day in this popper's life, in Darius's life. Actually, we should go ahead and open up our atlas here, our illustrated field guide. And let's see what Darius has to say here. So I have colored Darius there. And this is Darius Burr. Any morning, come sun, hail, or snow, Darius will be hauling his net at Grey Haven's jetty, preferring the quiet, contemplative life fishing affords him. He spends his days selling his daily catch to the local market before heading off for a pint or three. That sounds like an amazing life. <laughs> he loved to fish the wide open seas around Brighthelm, but saving up for a boat is difficult when the briny brewer <laughs> demands his attention. Okay, so I can check off this achievement if I win the game with Darius. And again, to win, I need to get three of the five virtues. Or if I move four gems from your fish hook to your purse in one turn. So if I move into a beach region four times before uh, moving back to a city to sell my catch, if I do that four times, then I can uh, gain that achievement. So pretty cool. Okay, so the first thing you're going to do on your turn is we have two turns because we have our popper and we also have our bird here, our pigeon, and we can start exploring. I'm thinking the first thing I'm going to do is Darius is going to uh, move over into this beach region here. And because of his fish hook, when your popper moves into the beach region, place one gem. So Darius has gone fishing for the day. And he catches one fish. This is going to be the fish. And I'm going to place that on his fish hook there. And now since there are no cards in the beach region, the first thing you want to do is you want to explore. So let's explore the beach. So explore the beach. We draw the top uh, beach card. And what do we have? A sandworm nest. Okay. Uh, when drawn, place three crescents from the supply face down on this card. A trained bird can collect one crescent from here and miss its next turn. The nest stays in this region until there are no crescents left. Okay, so this Samworn nest has three magical items that our trained bird can retrieve. So we're going to uh, take these. They're all supposed to be face down, but I'm not really too worried about it. I'm going to draw three without looking. And then I will place those face down on this uh, tile there. So now when I train my bird, when I pay four gems to train my bird, I can send my bird here to grab one of these crescents. And these crescents are going to be really cool items that I can use to do different things like adding to my trophy collection, or I can use them for money or use them for power, use them for various things during the game. Okay, so now it is my bird's turn and my bird, he could or uh, she, it, they could follow me into the beach or we could send them off to it in a different direction. I think maybe I'm going to send them off here into the uh, swamps there. My bird is flying over the swamps. So let's draw our top uh, swamp card there. And it is a willow's hovel. You may collect a crescent from the supply. If you do roll the golden charm, if you roll, if you get the sad face, your popper is cursed. 
the hovel stays in this region until it curses a pauper. Okay, so kind of a pressure luck element there. Um, let's see, do I want to collect a crescent from the supply? So the uh, golden charm here has one, two, looks like two bad faces. So I have a two and six chance of becoming cursed. Yes, that is, let's take that chance. So I'm going to uh, mix this up and we will draw one. And what do we got? We have a plus three. So we're gonna be able to use this to spend, to add three to our strength when we have a combat against a hazard. And now let's see if we become cursed. Yes, we do. Oh, the luck, the bad luck starts. All right, so our poor pauper was having such a good day fishing, but his bird tempted the willow's hovel. And now we're going to get cursed. And so now our pauper is inflicted with this curse there. And let's see what we have. Butterfingers, place this next to your inventory. Your pauper cannot use weapons in a fight. Okay, well, right now I don't have any weapons, so I do want to get rid of that curse, though. So I'm going to have to go back to a city. And now this gets discarded at the end of the turn because it stays um, out in the region until it curses a pauper. Let's go ahead and discard that there. Okay, so it is the next day. We will lower our time by one. And let's see here. It is our turn again, so... Um, I want to go ahead, let's see, I don't have any weapons right now, so I don't think I'm too concerned about my Butterfingers. I want to go and, and explore other beach regions so I can, um, so I can get some more of that uh, gold. Actually, you know what, if we go into a city with fewer than two gold, we can have our curse um, um, eliminated for free. So let's go ahead and do that. So I'm going to move back into the city here. And I'm going to have that curse be dealt with by the local uh, witch doctor or, I don't know, doctor, who, whoever deals with curses there, whoever heals curses. And then when I am in a city, I can uh, spend some time to shop. Or if there is a special quest in a city, I can try to uh, complete that quest. And that's one thing we didn't look at. So each of the cities starts with a quest and there are always going to be four quests available in a game. So let's see what our quests are here. We have this quest here at Greyhaven and that is Cursed Mines. The mines are filled with pitfalls. Explore an event card with Cursed in the title without your pauper becoming cursed. Reward gain one equipment. Okay, our quest over here in Blue Vale is the Sympathy Sale. And that has to, you have to do that in the mines also. A local woman wants you to buy something from her brother's idiotic shop as if as it's his birthday. Buy one equipment from the dungeon shop. So the dungeon shop is something we can find as we explore the mines. Up here in Lilacsville, we have the Paladins. So this quest has to be completed in that city because of that icon there. The essence of magical creatures can be a weapon against moon towers. Discard one magical hazard from your trophy room when you're in the city. Reward. Learn one recipe from the dispensary or collect four gems. All right. And then finally, up here in Black Sand, we have this quest, which is a study in luck. An elderly academic is making a study into the powers of fortune. Roll a uh, super happy on either the lucky charm or the golden charm at any time. If you do that, you can gain three gems or one equipment card. So those are the four quests that are available right now. So it was just our Papa's turn. Popper's turn. He simply, uh, Darius simply returned back to his city. He'll go ahead and sell his fish, gaining one coin there. He had his curse lifted, and now he is resting for the day. So now it is our bird's turn again, our pigeon, pigeon's turn. I think my pigeon is just going to fly into the mines here and see what they can see. So I'm going to draw a mine card. A fragile feather. You may discard this card before exploring in this region. So this is a, 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 um, an ingredient that we can take. And if we need it, we could add it to one of our recipes. But this feather here has to be found in the beach, has to be a yellow feather. At least I believe that's how the rule should be played. 
This is a fragile feather, so because we don't need it, it can stay out. However, I can choose to discard that if I want to on my next turn instead of having to uh, deal with that. So that is that day's turn. So now we want to lower our time by one. And let's see here. Um, I need to get some gems so I can train my pot, my, my bird. I also need to discover some hazards. I think I'm going to go ahead again and move into this beach region. So I will take my one fish and add that to my fish hook. And then I will explore the beach. And we find some pearls. So uh, pearls can be used for uh, any of our ingredients, but we don't need any pearls. Those are not fragile. So those are going to stay out on the board for now. And that is our popper's turn. It is now our bird's turn. Let's send our bird out into the forest to see what the bird can find. The bird is exploring the forest. And what do we have here? Okay, there we go. Our first, um, our first encounter with a wild fairy. It is a magical creature. The wild fairy is going to be worth uh, four points of trophy. So this is the hazard strength and also how many points it is worth in your trophy room. Um, this particular thing here, that means that it is a, um, it gives you this uh, fairy dung as, as an award and for defeating it. And that is actually one of the ingredients that we need for this particular recipe there. So if we defeat that fairy, we will get that reward. Or we could just uh, kill it for the two gems. So our bird now is going to be fighting this, this uh, wild fairy. And we go to our outcome deck. And we could draw the top card. And we need a four or higher in order to, uh, to beat that fairy. And we drew a five. All right. So the bird pecks the wild fairy to death sends it plummeting down into the depths of the forest and the bird is going to pick that up and the bird is going to uh we're going to use this for a um an ingredient for our fleet foot so i'm going to add that to the bottom of the fleet foot card and i will discard the five there all right so good job bird um okay one thing i forgot to do is when i entered that city the last time when your popper moves into a city region roll the lucky charm all right, so let's see if my popper was able to beg for any money. No. All right, I'm having bad luck with that lucky charm. More like an unlucky charm, am I right? Um, yeah, that's usually how it goes in these kinds of games. Okay, so the next day my popper is done fishing at the beach here. I'm going to um, explore into the mountains here. So let's draw our mountain card and see what we see. Ooh, an iron eye. Okay, so an iron eye is a mystical or magical creature. Um, there's the icons for the different creatures there. If we lose, we lose three gems. I only have one gem, so not too bad. If we win, we can get um, a different kind of a copper ore there for one of our um, ingredients, for one of our recipes for strength. Or we could trade that in for um, four gems. So I do have to fight that. Um, let's see. I think I'm going to go ahead and use, let's see, a four. I don't have any weapons. I'm going to go ahead and uh, let's draw the card first. Let's see what we get. A five. Hey, we did it. Okay, I was going to spend that, but we don't need to. Let's, I don't think you have to choose to spend it before. Let's see. Uh, place it face up in your inventory. When your bird or popper fights a hazard, you may discard it to add the number um, on the crescent to their strength. Okay, so we don't need to. We killed the, um, was it the iron eye outright? So now we can trade that for four gems or we can get that ingredient. I'm going to get the four gems that that is worth. So I'll discard that in the mountain region. I'm going to draw my four gems Right, was it four? Yep, four, but I'm actually not going to draw. I'm just going to use them to trade in to uh, pay four gems to trade my pigeon here. And now my pigeon is trained. So now instead of exploring, the pigeon can remove an ingredient from the region it occupies to collect two gems. So now my um, pigeon can now go to these uh, areas, these regions where these um, ingredients are that I don't need 
and my pigeon can trade those for gems. So my pigeon can go out and try to collect money for me. So that is very, very useful there. Okay, now it is my pigeon's turn again. And let's see, I'm going to, I'm gonna go ahead and have my pigeon fly into the mines here, draw my mine card, and let's see what I find. Fragile fish scales. Okay, I do not need any fish scales, but that is going to be there now. But now, instead of exploring, so my next turn, I could stay there with my pigeon, and I could have my pigeon discard that to gain two gems for my popper. That is really, really cool. All right, so next day, um, let's see. Oh, we did uh, defeat this fairy, so we can add one to our time. So that's going to bring us up to uh, 13 there. And so we're going to lower our time back to 12. It is our popper's turn. Our popper's going to meet up with his bird in the mines. And we're kind of looking for, possibly looking for this, um, this dungeon shop here to complete that quest. Or possibly some kind of cursed cavern to complete that quest. All right, let's see what we find here. A bone bench. If your pauper is cursed, the bench will remove all their curses. This bench stays in this region until it has removed any curses. Okay, so now we have a free place we can return to to remove curses. That's cool. And now it is our bird's turn. I think the bird is not going to move. Uh, the bird is just, instead of exploring, the pigeon can remove any ingredient from the region it occupies to collect two gems. So my pigeon is going to remove this fragile fish scales and carry back to my pauper two gems. So my, my bird took those fish scales and perhaps flew to a city and sold them to a potion shop and now has returned to his pauper with the gems. Okay, we'll lower their time one more and let's go ahead and I'm just gonna stay here and I'm going to explore this region here. So the mine, what do we find here? Ooh. A white pirate. Fail, lose three gems. Okay, we obviously have three gems now that we could fail at. We need a five there. Um, this item here, we could actually trade that in for, I believe that's an item. Uh, does that? Yes, yeah, so that would be an item. So we could kill this pirate. We could take three gold. We could collect a regular item. Or we could um, draw, uh, we could add this to our trophy room for five points worth of trophies. What I like to do is when I draw a, 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 an enemy that actually has an equipment as a reward, I like to draw the equipment right away. So it kind of removes it from the, the deck. And now that piece of equipment is always going to be staying with this um, hazard here. And if it gets discarded, it gets discarded because it was that pirate's uh, treasure. So I don't know, just adds a little bit of kind of a permanence to that. We'll add that there, and now I need to encounter that. So I will go ahead and fight it, and I drew a six. I've been getting really lucky with my outcome cards, but that means there's probably, uh, you know, there's fewer and fewer good cards in that deck. But we defeat the pirate, and what do I want for the reward here? Um, I think we're going to take the piece of equipment. So let's see what the pirate was holding. The pirate was holding a combing rod. When your pauper moves into a beach region, collect a gem. Okay, so it can help me uh, find a gem in a beach region, and I can use that as many times as I want. Okay, so we defeated that pirate there. Um, I think my bird is just going to stay here. I'm going to spend two whole turns here in these mines trying to find either one of those cursed tunnels or that dungeon shop. So let's see what we find here. Ooh, a moon warden effect. Moon towers can't be fought. Okay, so these are uh, a moon warden. If there was a moon tower out on the board, these guys guard those towers. So you have to defeat them before you can fight a moon, um, one of the towers. They're very powerful with a seven. Okay, and that was my bird. So I can't use any items. I don't really have any items. I can use crescents though. And so I think my bird is just going to have to fight it and I need a seven. So let's see, what do I draw here? A three. Oh no. Um, if another character is in this region, you may discard this card and draw again. Because even if I added this um, here, I would only have a six. So should I chance it? 
Hmm, let's see here. Yeah, maybe so. I will chance that because I do have another character here because my popper and bird are both there. So maybe this will be better. A four. All right. So a four. We're going to uh, discard the crescent to be a seven there. And then I would have defeated that moon uh, beast here. And now I can either get seven points of trophies, five gems, or three crescents. Uh, this is how many crescents the hazard is carrying. And I do want to double check. I do want to make sure that the bird can actually use crescents. I think the bird can use crescents to fight. Um, let's see here. I don't think there are items. Uh, can be collected by your popper and your bird in a variety of ways. There's no limit to how many crescents you can carry. These are only used in Moon Tower. Uh, when they're sold, they're discarded at the place. If all crescents are discarded. When your bird or popper fights a hazard. Yep, so the bird can use crescents, so very cool. But what do I want as a reward for this? I'm gonna, I'm gonna go ahead and draw three crescents because those are pretty powerful. I like those. So close my eyes here, draw three, and let's see what I got here. Okay, we got that one, a plus one and a three. So let's see, the three counts for uh, trophy points. So we can add that to our trophy room. And we're trying to get a strength of 30 in order to uh, become brave and get the, the virtuosity, the virtue, um, virtuosity of bravery. We have this as a snow crescent. Place it face up in your inventory. You can discard it at the end of your popper's turn. Your popper gets another turn or ignores having to miss a turn. Okay. And then the plus one here is just going to give us a plus one to our combat. And yeah, so that's kind of how um, Popper's Ladder is played. It's a very simple game. I probably did a few little things wrong, forgot a few little things. It's always super easy to, to forget things while you are filming. But um, yeah, so you would explore. We um, still have a few turns. I defeated another um, hazard, so that would get moved up. You do need to keep track of your time. So it is one little, one little tiny piece of bookkeeping in the solo game that isn't there in the non-solo game. But uh, yeah, you would just uh, continue playing like this, continue going on your, on your quests for the three virtues of the five. And um, as moon towers would appear, you would want to defeat those moon towers and try to power up your popper and your bird in order to, uh, to win the game. So yeah, I hope you guys enjoyed exploring uh, Bright Helm a little bit. Actually, let's see what kind of things we could have found here. Um, the Moon Warden. So I know the Moon Wardens are here in our um, illustrated field guide. So the Moon Guards. When the Moon Towers came, so did these strange ghostly figures. When stalking the countryside around the villages and towns, these ethereal beings seem to have some symbiotic connection with the towers. So we had the Moon Warden. Let's see, defeat a moon guard when there is a moon tower on the board. No. Defeat a moon hound, a moon wraith, and a moon warden in the same game. Or defeat a moon guard using a moon blade. So one of the ones that we could be working for right now is this one to defeat all three of them. Uh, what else did we find here? A white pirate. Let's see here. So the white pirate is not in there. Um, maybe the iron ore. Is the iron ore in here? Merman and bird. The eyes. So that's one of the things we fought there. Was this iron eye. Uh, long before Brighthelm's mines were such dry, the dwarves developed steam powered technology to help them with their underground work. These eyes, perfectly suited to the tunnels below, protected miners against the assorted creatures that dwelled there. Their power faded with the passage of time, but when the moon towers arrived, they woke up again, and everything is an enemy to these unblinking orbs. Defeat an iron eye. All right, so I could check that off now. Defeat an iron eye. Okay, so I checked off defeat an iron eye. Now what I would do is I think I would take some time to color that in as I uh, get to check off one of those boxes. Uh, the white pirate was not there. I wonder if Willow's hovel is in here. Let's see here. Willow's hovel. 
hazards. That would be one of the um, events. The moon guards, seer, willows hovel, abandoned boat. Um, it doesn't look like Willow's Hovel is in here. So that's not something that we can check off yet. Or check off at all, I should say. Um, is the combing rod one of the items in here? Let's see. Combing rod. Combing rod. The combing rod is used to divine water sources, but you can tweak it to find useful things too. Have a combing rod in your inventory and collect a gem when using the combing rod. Okay, so I do have one in my inventory, so I can check off that achievement there. And then we can also read about our pigeon here. Let's see, the birds. Pigeon. The humble bird is as loyal as it is common. Its scavenging abilities can prove useful when there's something to find. Train the pigeon. Use the pigeon to collect six gems in one game by removing ingredients. Okay, we have trained our pigeon, so we can check off of that achievement there. I love this achievement book. It, it just, it is so cool. Oh man, what a great idea. What a creative use of a very simple component. Just adding something interesting to the, uh, to the game. Let's see, we do have some fighting tea as well. There is nothing like a good cup of hot before launching head first into a scrap. Has some fighting tea in your inventory, which we do. Draw two outcome cards with the same strength when using the fighting tee. Okay, that's a cool, that's a cool achievement. Very nice there. All right, well, I think we're done now. I'm going to play the rest of the game off the camera and just enjoy my, my time casually with uh, Popper's Ladder and the Moon Towers expansion. Have a good one. We'll talk to you later. Bye-bye.